My niece, who is dead from a drug overdose, had a kid, and he sometimes spends time here at the house, and it just <clears throat> makes me think about how much internalized homophobia I have, because whenever he's here, I... I worry to myself, well, if LGBT anything is a bad influence, then just my being around him could be a bad influence, and I, I have to stay away. I mean, it's not like there's any attraction or anything like that. It's not like that. It's just the element of, well, what if just my presence and the things that I have to offer and my the things that I the, my priorities or, or any of that you know what if that's a bad influence in some way so I have paranoia about I mean I, I try to be as friendly as I can when he's around he sometimes comes on the weekends um and I could explain the, the whole scenario here at the house even more but whatever um but i but i always have fears that just like almost anything that i could offer unless it's like humor or something could be a bad influence could be th th that i could be because he he has a father he has a good father. He has a father that, that he has a decent father figure with decent values. And he's got all that. And all, all I can think about is this notion that I could disrupt that in some way. And that's the reason why I am scared of children. I'm scared that I could be a negative influence on them just by my, I don't know, I don't know whether it's just existence or what, I, I, I don't know what. So as I, as I said in that other video, I've, I've, I've been experiencing a lot of internalized homophobia. This notion that unless it's pushing forth for a traditional family and that kind of mindset, that it's a negative effect on society in some way. And that I am a negative effect on society just by my mere existence. And that's not the way things should be. That's not, that's not the kind of thoughts that should go through my head, but it does. And I don't know how to fight it. I've wanted to do some therapy. I had a miserable experience in the last therapist I had where... You know, it's, it's quite clear that the only reason they're into it, they're in it is just to make money. They, they, the reason why their schedule is as it is, is because they don't have people that regularly come back because people will just see this person once or twice and they're like, oh, this is pointless. You know, so that's the kind of therapist I had last. Um... But I, I've let a lot of a lot of these narratives get to me, get to my self-esteem, get to just my my sense of what what am I in society? What do I represent? And the moment that someone comes out as being in the LGBT spectrum somewhere there, you know, are they automatically seen as supporting? All of the woke stuff. Sometimes it makes me want to go in the closet.
I guess that's really the hardest thing about this is not want, I, I just don't want to be seen as someone that supports some of this crazy stuff that's being pushed forth. I don't want to be seen as part of that. Sometimes I wish the whole LGBTQIAA plus, 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 plus would, you know, separate into their own individual movements or something. That'd be nice. I don't know. Um, I've rambled long enough. Thanks for watching.